Thank you, Uncle Moogie, for your welcome to country. Uh, it's always appreciated and, and moving. Uh, but to the Christie's Beach Primary School and the Wakakiri dancers, that was, that was bloody awesome. Well done, well done. Uh, to all of the, the teachers here today, but most importantly, to all our extraordinary young Aboriginal STEM uh, thinkers, contributors, uh, I am very, very grateful um, for the opportunity to be able to join you this morning and un open this important uh, Congress. Uh, I just want to invite people to take the opportunity to look a little bit back. A bit over 60,000 years or so, and think about the first moment that human beings stepped onto this continent. We know that it only took a, a few thousand years for the ancestors of the first Australians to cross half the planet from humanity's birthplace in Africa, through the Middle East and across into Asia, and then Ireland hopping southeast until they uh, reached Sundra the vanished continent that once contained much of Malaysia and Indonesia. Those intrepid adventurers then set out on an incredible sea voyage, surviving treacherous days and nights, navigating across open ocean before reaching Timor, and then the now submerged land bridge that once joined Australia and New Guinea, they crossed, arriving here long before modern humans had it even reached Europe, much less the Americas. And when those pioneers arrived, they found that their new home contained plants, animals and landscapes that no other human being had ever encountered before. Imagine that moment. The closest parallel I could draw would be landing on another planet. And not only did they survive, they thrived. And it's no secret how. You don't successfully navigate here without being curious, without being smart, without being incredibly resourceful. You don't survive in a new land without using all the knowledge accrued on your journey, everything you've learned, everything you've been told, every bit of data available to you, to start making some educated guesses about what plants are edible, what animals are dangerous, what the seasons bring, what the land provides. In short, your ancestors were Australia's first scientists. In fact, genetic analysis has revealed how the initial Aboriginal population, population grew to spread all over this land. They struck out in two parallel movements, east and west, forming settlements along the entire coastline until both groups encountered each other, once again approximately 6,000 years later, somewhere around Port Augusta, from which they struck in land to explore our Great Red Centre. And thus, the story of the first Australians is an epic adventure, taking in every environment this continent contains, through the steamy rainforests to the arid deserts, snow-capped mountains and the wind-battered coastlines. None of that is possible without engaging the scientific principles of observation, theory and experiment. None of that is possible without developing new technologies to hunt, to catch fish, to conserve water, to navigate, to make shelter, to cultivate stocks. Sir Isaac Newton said of, once said of his contribution to science that, and I quote, if I have seen further 
It is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And only now we are beginning to recognise the scientific giants that walked upon this continent first. This tremendous success story, this incredible triumph of human ingenuity and potential should be celebrated by all humankind, let alone ourselves. Yet only in recent times have the scientific discoveries and insights of our First Nations been given the study and celebration they deserve. From sophisticated astronomy to forensics, to understanding the forces that shape and change our land and waterways, the roles of our unique species within the ecosystem, and the design and engineering of tools and structures. So while we may think that STEM is something that is focused on the future, you are also part of a long and proud tradition of great thinkers and experimentalists on country, people whose names have been lost to us, but whose wisdom and spirit of inquiry echo through millennia. I sincerely envy your connection to those explorers, inventors, thinkers, whose courage and curiosity lives on in you today. We know that the the future of South Australia is going to be driven by science, technology, engineering and mathematics. South Australia's high-tech future, hydrogen, AUKUS, space, II, cyber, these are all ambitious endeavours and we will need everybody in our state to play a part in realising this incredible moment of boundless potential. My government, we're determined to create a world-class education system that equips South Australia for this future. Everything from three-year-old preschool to TAFE rejuvenation, technical colleges in our high schools, bringing universities together. But as you will see through the sessions in this Congress, science, technology, engineering and maths aren't arcane, mystical spells or secrets known only to an elite few unconnected to the real world. They are everywhere. They are in the things that you do every single day. They're a vital part of what makes us human, as much as art, music, and even sport, all three of which actually have STEM at their core. And so I want to encourage all of you here to reflect with pride upon the incredible lineage of which you are part, the boundless potential that is in each and every one of you and the proud scientific legacy you are continuing today. You walk an unbroken path that spans thousands of years, standing atop the broad shoulders of generations of giants. And I don't say that just to flatter you. I say this because we are in a pivotal moment in our human history. Our climate is changing, our world is uncertain, our future needs all the help it can get. If our species is to solve the great challenges before us and, and reap the incredible opportunities such solutions can provide, then we are going to need to draw upon the skill, all the knowledge, all the creativity, all the imagination and curiosity available to us. We will need to face the future in the exact same courageous spirit your ancestors showed all those millennia ago as they set out for that far horizon in hope and wonder. And young people here in this room, walking in thousands of years of wisdom and armed with the best data and most cutting edge technology in human history, give me great reason for optimism. Thank you for taking up the challenge Thank you for honouring the mighty journey that has brought you here. I hope that this Congress inspires you to go out there and change the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.